hello everybody and welcome. I am so excited to join all of you guys today because today is Georgia runoff eve. You know what that means? That means that tomorrow we are going to have the Georgia Senate runoffs. The Georgia Senate runoffs are so crucial to determining the future of the American Senate. And today we have a huge, huge lineup with some incredible icons to come and tell us all about Georgia and what is at stake. We have people from Mark Ruffalo to Sean Penn, an exclusive performance by Ali and AJ, even Congressman Eric Swalwell will be joining us here today for our special program. And this special program is actually a TikTok text bank. We have literally over a hundred TikTokers, huge iconic TikTokers, your favorites that are joining us for a special TikTok event. So what that means is today we are going to have first this live streamed program right now that you're viewing with all of our amazing performances and guest speakers. And then we're going to have right now, I'm on this Zoom call, which we are streaming out from. There are literally over 400 people and counting on this. I am so excited for the grassroots energy and the organizers that have all come in to put this together. I am the co-founder of Plus One Vote, an organization dedicated to getting out the vote and improving representation of young people and people of color in our in our democracy. And you know, we are here with an amazing coalition of different organizations that are here to get out the vote. And that includes Plus One Votes, Future Coalition, 18 by Votes, that includes Gen Z for Change, as well as the Democrat HQ. And so we have all these great organizations, all these great organizers, and I wanna give y'all an exclusive AOK -okay information on what's going on, how it is. And so I wanna introduce to you our first two guests, which are Alicia Nova, the Director of Engagement for Future Coalition, as well as Aiden Cohn Murphy, who is the creator of TikTok for Biden, as well as Gen Z for Change. Guys, how are you? Doing amazing. Good. Good. So, so tell me, guys, tell me about yourselves and please tell me, tell me what you guys are organizing right now with us. Awesome. I can go first, Aiden. Okay, awesome. Um, so hey everyone, my name is Alicia Novoa. I'm Director of Engagement at Future Coalition. If you don't know, Future Coalition is a national network of youth-led activists uh, and activists, youth-led organizations yeah. um, and activists. Um, we This event started really with the phone call between me and Aiden where we said, how can we put our efforts to the Georgia Senate runoffs? Um, and it turned into this huge event in which we brought in people who we really thought could could reach our peers and reach other young people. Um, and we're just so excited for the event because these runoffs are how we can really get a voice um, in our government. Um, and it's a really huge year. So, so excited, so happy to see your faces, so happy to see the chats. Um, and I'll pass it over to Aiden, thanks so much. Hi. Um... Yeah, thank you. This is just, this is so incredible. I did not imagine this ever being this big. And the chat, the chat is so sweet. Um, yeah, so, so Gen Z for Change, TikTok for Biden is a group of over 500 TikTok creators um, with a combined following of over like 200 million, which is just absolutely insane to me every time I think about that. Um, and I knew that we needed to do something focused on Georgia um, because we, ha we have this huge group of people um, like who, who are ready to make change. Um, and, but the, even this, this is so far above any expectations I may have had. And I'm, it just, it gives me hope that, that our generation can finally be the one to actually make systemic change. So I'm so excited to get the vote out and thank you so much to all the creators and, um, people and people from TikTok who are here. Amazing. Thank you so much, Aiden. And you know, I think you really touched on something that this event is youth organized, youth led, and really puts youth at the forefront because the reality is youth, us, all of us on this call, and even for you guys watching at home, the reality is we are the ones who can fundamentally decide what happens in Georgia tomorrow. And so if we turn up, if we show up, if we show out, if we're posting, if we're tweeting, if we're TikToking, whatever, it makes a difference. And today I'm really excited for us to all make that difference together. I wanna also introduce one incredible youth organizer who is the executive director of 18 by Vote. This is an awesome organization because they've been doing so much to lead 18 year olds and getting them 16, 17 and 18 year olds to get out and vote. You may have seen their executive director's work in Vice, in Huffington Post, in MTV, or even recently on The Daily Show. Jasmine, how are you doing? 
I am doing great, Saad. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. And thank you for all that you've done and all that everyone on this call has done this election cycle. Um, we are so, so excited. 18 by Vote is a nonprofit organization that works with 16, 17, and 18 year olds and really equips them to go out and to not just vote, but also to make sure that their communities are also keeping up this work, right? Because after election day, we got to keep it going. Um, but we are so, so excited to in invite an amazing, amazing um, star to join us right now. If you're like me, you probably listened to Ali and AJ like too much in your adolescence and was so excited when Potential Breakup Song explicit version came out last week. Um, but AJ is so much more than just an artist. She's also an actor and she's an activist and someone who cares really deeply about making sure that young people are heard in our democracy and are going out and are voting uh, tomorrow in this critical uh, runoff election. So I'm super excited to be able to introduce AJ um, and allow her to say a few words now. Hi guys. Thank you so much for having me 18 by vote. Um, I'm really excited to be part of this. I'm missing one half of my band, that's Allie. She's away on a family trip in Utah, but she sends her love. Um, I'm excited to encourage young voters to get out and vote. Tomorrow's the deadline for Georgia. This is an incredibly important race. Um, clearly we saw what happened when people come together and really wanna invoke change. Um, I think from a political aspect, but also a creative aspect, it's so beautiful that we can come together as artists, musicians, whether you're you know, a TikTok creator or an organizer, um, we're all here to do grassroots work. And it's beautiful to be a part of something where we all come together for the greater good to make systemic change happen and move that forward. So I just wanna encourage youth, 16, 17, 18 um, year old people to you know, feel encouraged by voting and not intimidated by it. And that you know, a lot, generation of people. And I hope that you guys understand that it's, it's a, it's not a burden, but an incredible um, kind of moment of, of humbling to be able to do something like this. Absolutely, AJ, that's so real. And I just feel like I loved growing up watching you and, you know, Ali and AJ on TV and seeing all your songs and you guys have le recently re-blown up again, going viral on TikTok, which we love to see, iconic. And we actually have an exclusive performance from Ali and AJ right now. So let's get that on and listen, listen to what they got for us. <laughs> Something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I got to beware. I think it's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. people speak in their minds getting so much resistance from behind it's time we stop hey what's that sound everybody look what's going down Take you away, you better stop. Hey, what's the 
that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Stop. Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's what's going down. Stop. Hey, what's that sound? Uh, it sounds like everybody going out to the polls, to Georgia, to get out there and vote in this iconic, legendary election tomorrow. Thank you so much for that amazing performance, AJ. You are a gem, and we really appreciate everything you've done to get out the vote with us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And now we have another special guest which this person is literally an icon, an Academy Award winning actor, a writer, producer, director, best selling author. He is the co-founder of CORE, which is the community organized relief effort, a nonprofit that's dedicated to saving lives and, and strengthening communities that are affected in invulnerable situations, including places like Haiti, the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, and even right here in the United States. Right now, their efforts are super important there because you know they're, they're actively trying to get people tested for COVID-19. We all know how big of an issue this pandemic is. Even the fact that we're right here on the Zoom call is, is because of this pandemic. And so all the work that CORE has been doing has been fundamental to really bringing us forward in, in this process, in this transition, in this, in this pandemic. And so I really am excited to introduce our next guest, Sean Penn. How are you? I'm very well. Hello to all. Um, but first, I guess, uh, shall I jump right in? Yeah, please tell me what's up. What are your thoughts on Georgia on this runoff situation tomorrow? Well, I've only got one thought that's streaming through me all day, every day. And I don't have a luxury, and none of us do, of thinking anything else. But I do have the luxury of a front row seat to the likelihood of this. I'm 60 years old. I'm born in 1960. My father was from what they called the greatest generation. And we've tried, you know, I've seen it through my life. God knows when Stephen Stills wrote For What It's Worth, beautifully performed ladies, by the way. Uh, I remember that on the radio, looking out the windows of the car, and the activities on the streets and the anti-war movement at, at that time. But there was not the kind of cohesion of spirit. There wasn't the, the, the I, I have never had so much belief that with an efficient government, we will have a hyper-efficient citizenry based on the, this young generation. I saw it, I was with our staff out at our, our biggest test site today at Dodger Stadium, all about the ages of the people I'm looking at on this Zoom call right now. And you know, I do recognize, as you all do, that there is complacency in every generation, including your own, but the leadership that outweighs that, that I'm seeing uh, is, is something where, it, you know, I'm feeling like I gotta quit smoking because there might be a lot to live for. Um, it's really exciting. What you guys are doing is so essential. I was in Georgia last, I was in Georgia between uh, um, uh, Christmas and New Year's and I saw the same thing there with the young grassroots organizations. And I think the one big message that I like to share with people because we're so quick to, cannibalize uh, uh, from the inside uh, to, to, to criticize, uh, you know, like-minded people because everybody's got their particular issue they focus on and so on. And, and God knows there's a, there's a more progressive wing and a more centrist wing of any given party. Uh, but what we do know this country and the world needs right now is efficiency in governance. And what Georgia has the ability to be is an efficiency we would not have seen in my lifetime yeah. because it doesn't just have a generally like-minded uh, uh, Congress at that point if, they, if, these two, if these two Senate seats are won. It has you. It has a generation who is engaged. And I think the, one of the silver linings of this COVID-19 thing- This is amazing is accountability. 
the fact that we that, that as a country we're starting to understand who is accountable for what civic knowledge is building and that's going to be the game changer yeah so no absolutely civic knowledge and service are going to be the game changers and what you're doing is service so i just say thank you as one old timer to a bunch of uh those who'll see the future forward no, uh, Sean, I, I think you make a really good point uh, in that I too get so much inspiration from the young people that are out here. And I think that we stand on the shoulders of giants like yourself who have been doing this work for decades now. I mean, you know, you said yourself, you're 60 years old and, and I think you have set up in part the foundation that has now enabled us to organize in Georgia, organize this event for Georgia and get out the vote for tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you all. And, you know, Sean also gave us some incredible insight as to how important our representatives are in this democracy. The reality is that if we don't vote, if we're not representing ourselves, particularly as young people, as well as people of color, as well as the LGBTQ, whatever community you are from, if you're not representing yourself in the election, don't expect your representatives to represent you either. And right now we have actually a representative from Congress as well. He is the representative from California's 15th district, which is in the East Bay near San Francisco. And he's also a member of the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committee. He was actually first elected at the age of 31 and has been doing so much to help push for so many issues. Congressman Eric Swalwell, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm in Washington right now, and uh, consider yourself lucky that you're not here. Uh, this <laughs> yeah. is hell for the next 16 days, uh, I tell you, but uh, there are better days ahead. I mean, hey, from what I've been seeing on the news, it seems like y'all have a lot in front of you, a lot of issues to solve, and I feel like I feel like there's been a lot of issues to getting anything solved. Do you have some insight for us? Well, first, I have to thank you and everyone on this call because uh, you showed up in the November elections, and uh, we are on our way out of hell, right? We have Joe Biden and a historic vice presidential uh, candidate who will be vice president in 16 days and Kamala Harris. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Yesterday, we took the oath in Congress and swore in the most diverse uh, Congress ever and more women in Congress than ever before. So Congress is starting to finally look uh, like and speak like and uh, you know step up like the rest of America. But uh, look, we're gonna see uh, on Wednesday uh, on Capitol Hill, uh, what uh, darkness uh, looks like when uh, Republicans, about 150 of them, are going to try and overturn what you did uh, back on November 3. Uh, they're going to try and persuade the Congress and the Vice President who will preside over uh, the uh, Electoral College certification to overturn it and have Congress decide who should be President. Uh, Congressman, that has been the most insane situation to see all of that unraveling, to see just a gang of, of people in the Senate and Congress and, and whatever just saying, uh, not real, fake news, these election results don't matter, they're not real. And myself, as a co-founder of Plus One Vote, having mobilized literally so many people to register and to get out to vote and to then see them actively trying to remove results that are already in place. I mean, what do you think that has, what impact do you think that has right now on Georgia? You know, it makes people question whether this is really a democracy. It makes people question whether they should show up and participate. My message to you is yes, that this is going to fail spectacularly uh, on <laughs> Wednesday, uh, but the, the greater damage uh, is the work that we're gonna have to repair over the next few years to make people believe Especially, I uh, think of the people who came to America, and I, I know so many uh, of your generation uh, are first generation Americans. Uh, again, that's, I think, the greatness of our country. That's our strength, is that we have attracted uh, you and your parents to come to this country uh, because they believe this is a country where uh, anyone, any person, regardless of you know, where you were born, uh, you know, who you love, uh, who you worship, uh, you know, what you have uh, on your back, that if you work hard, you can do better and dream bigger. But when you see that we start to look more and more like the countries that uh, many people fled from, uh, you're starting to wonder, like, was it worth the journey? Was it worth, you know, risking our livelihood and everything to come here? And I want to make sure that we all do all we can to make sure that it was worth it, that this is still a country uh, that we all aspire to be a part of. Now, just over my shoulder, you probably hear 
a two-year-old and a three-year-old yeah. who are eating dinner. And I think of like, who's going to fight for them? Uh, and it's you, the work that you're doing, the texts that you're sending, the phone calls that you're making, you're the ones that are gonna make sure that uh, when they go to school, uh, that they're gonna be free from gun violence. You're gonna make sure that uh, when they get older, they're going to wanna have kids of their own because they'll believe that those kids will be around rather than those kids will have to live with the consequences of climate. And so many young people today tell me, I don't even know if I wanna have children because I think about what's gonna to happen to this earth and why would I wanna bring people in uh, to that? And that, that's so deflating to hear. So the work that you're doing is going to make sure that the promise of America and the promise you know, of a, a greener earth uh, is achievable. You're the ones that are gonna make sure that college is affordable uh, for everyone and that we're gonna have uh, you know, college for all uh, in this country. So I, I'm really you know, counting on you. Uh, Sean uh, and Vanessa and Kevin are some of the friends who invited me to, to do this. And Sean Penn mentioned that He's 60. Uh, I just turned 40 a couple months ago. And many Happy of birthday. you are, are 20. Thank you. So, look, look. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Said. And so I, I think of it as 60. Sean's 60. I'm 40. Many of you are 20. And the best advice I give people is that you have to continue to always find mentors. And you have to use both hands, right? One hand to always reach up. And Sean has been a very good friend and I've reached up to him uh, to look to his activism and you know, what he does to help people. But you have to use the other hand to reach down and lift others up. And so while Sean has inspired me, my hope is that I can do work that inspires others. And pretty soon you are all gonna be in a position where you're out of college, you know, you're in your first career. And I hope that you never forget about the work that you're doing right now and that you use that other hand to reach down and lift others up to make sure that they're as solid as activists as you are today. So that that's uh, you know the obligation of using both hands uh, to help uh, everyone in our country. And you're doing that right now to help us yep. win Georgia. We can win Georgia. We can make sure that better days are ahead. And I just wanna thank all of you for the work that you're doing. No, absolutely. Thank you, Congressman Swalwell. I think that's very real to reach up and reach down, to reach out and really make sure we make this an inclusive space and that we welcome everyone to not just organize, not just vote in Georgia, but continue this movement, continue this energy. This is something that's been built out for decades back and we have to keep on building it as we're going forward. Congressman, you are actually one of the first people, one of the first representatives in Congress to retweet something from my organization Plus One Vote years ago. So thank you for for that love, we love you and thank you for joining us on this call today. Of course. Thank you. Let's win Georgia because we win America. See you guys. Thanks so much. And our next guest is actually from Georgia, born and raised. I am hoping that, you know, a lot of you guys are going to know who this guy is. If you all have a Netflix account, I'm sure you have seen him here or there. Uh, or Tommy, uh, we have Tommy Dorfman. I'm hoping you can provide us with 13 reasons why we need to vote in Georgia. So with that, take the floor. Thanks so much. Um, this is a really... First of all, I'm like nervous as fuck, um, sweating be... a lot. Um, Sean Penn's iconic, uh, that was insane. So congratulations everybody who made that happen um, for all of us. I took many screenshots like a creep. Um, but yeah, I am truly just, first of all, really fucking inspired by your generation. I sort of fall in between congressmen and Jen Z, um, I'm a fucking millennial. I'm 28 years old. It's dark. It's dark in this in this town. Um, but I grew up in Georgia. Yeah. What'd you say? I said, yeah, get I mean, that I, avocado toast. <laughs> precisely. I grew up in Georgia. I fundamentally never ever thought Georgia had the potential to go blue. It, it was always going to be a red state. We weren't able to really win. Um, even when I was canvassing in high school a little bit, I just, it, it felt like a state where your vote didn't matter. And I think um, because of you guys and because of Stacey Abrams and because of just the world wanting progress, Georgia has become a state where your vote matters and your vote is influential, not just in that state, but in the entire country and thus in the entire world, especially when it, you think about this particular runoff election and the importance that this election has in passing bills like the Equality Act that have been stuck in Senate for a long time um, in making sure that LGBTQ people and BIPOC people and women can't be discriminated against for um, just because of their gender, their sexuality, their race. 
that's one of many things that are being held up in the Senate right now. And hopefully we have an opportunity to elect to more progressive officials, I mean, senators, perhaps not perfect. Um, I think something that's really important as I've learned in doing this work and I'm learning from you guys is this is all about making progress, not perfection, one step at a time. This is a marathon. Okay, this is not a sprint. Um, this is but the beginning for you guys, right? And it's it's still the beginning for me. I hopefully will live a long life of continuing to devote myself to this kind of service, as Sean Penn said, and have the opportunity to learn from and work alongside beautiful, talented, insanely creative people like yourselves. Um, text banking works, period. Phone banking works, period. Uh, end of story. Social media can be a tool for fucking progress and freedom if we choose to use it that way. So, you know, I, I, there's nothing more I can say. You're already here. You've already shown up to do the work. I'm just here to say I'm in awe of you and I'm grateful for you all. And I'm congratulate all of you for fucking showing up today. We have 24 ish more less than that hours uh to get this done and to keep inspiring people and providing resources for people to get to polls and to get to polls safely tomorrow and fucking god willing win this election so that we can hold the senate accountable and we can hold our new president accountable um and then continue to move forward in a more progressive way so that we stop killing our earth um period no absolutely i mean <laughs> Woo! Just a way to put it all into perspective, Tommy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that you've really been advocating uh, for a lot of these issues to change in the way that we perceive people, in the way that we understand people, in the way that we accept people, and in the way that we push forward for all these issues. So, so thank you so much for joining us today. We really yeah. appreciate everything. Thank you for having helpful. me. Can I see your nails? I keep looking at them. Oh! <laughs> Lol. Oh, those are. Nice. That's for misgendering me. <laughs> oh my god! I know. I. I'm totally I said kidding. It. Um, but yes. Oh my god, they look so Thank good. You. So good. <laughs> Thank you so much for. When joining. you're gonna text bank, you better have your fucking nails done. I mean, hey, <laughs> good guys, if y'all nails don't look good, still text bank. We need every text we can get. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Thank actually you gonna stay you. on in text bank. Period. Amazing. And up next, our next guest is someone who you'll probably recognize from a whole bunch of movies. Uh, he is a climate activist, a, a climate champion, has been pushing for environmental issues for quite some time. And I'm really excited to have with us the incredible Mark Ruffalo. How are you, Mark? I have to unmute. My hey, I'm great. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. I, lo I love what you're doing. And uh, I want to love up on all you guys just for, for being here, for taking the time, for caring, for um, putting the time in and, um, and, and, and being, um, being informed, uh, yeah. knowing about these issues. Uh, you know, I come from a generation where we didn't, we didn't, we only knew music, you know, um, we didn't know really the political scene. And what's happening with you and at this moment and the world is this kind of um, this great coming together uh, under, under values that we all share. Um, and there's probably a lot more in common between us and even the people on the other side of the aisle than any of us really want to um, admit to or believe or understand. Um, and, and, and what's kept us apart, uh, is, is, is these arbitrary ideologies that, um, political parties are pushing. And, um, but when we, when we're with each other and we, we talk to each other and we listen to each other, we really want to have a fair world. We want our kids to be safe. We want our streets to be safe. We want everyone to have the same opportunities. And that's what our movement is about. Um, and that's why this moment is so important because, you know, I've been uh, politically active for, for decades now. And I've been pretty up on it, you know, I, I, I've, I've kept in it. But there's never been a moment where so many people are working together 
in one unified way, even though so many of us have differences. And we have a chance. There's never been so many politicians. I mean, they swore in the most diverse, the most sexually um, uh, uh, diverse and balanced. I mean, we still got a ways to go. Um, Congress in history. Uh, we have our first Native American woman, who's um, Deb Holland, who's who's going to lead the the department that is in charge of the well-being of Native American people. This finally. is finally, and and I'm telling you, you, this is a moment. This is this is a one in a million moment that we're fighting for. And, and it's, and it's, this is just a comma on this movement. And we are part of this tradition that has been happening for 30, 40, 50 years. And, and you are the crown jewel of that movement. Our ability to talk to each other in this direct way is the, is the manifestation of democracy in action with, a, with an informed politic. Yes. And the people who we can we can give power to right now have never had power in the political scene in the entire lifetime of this nation. Yep. And that's what we're fighting for today. That's why you're phone banking. That's, that's why we're all here. That's why it's important. We can have the floor in a way that is the most progressive, most diverse way that has ever been in the United States by winning the Senate mm -hmm. and by, by what you do tomorrow in, in Georgia and, yeah. and how we can convince people now on these phone banks and text banks. Yeah, no, I think, Mark, you're absolutely right in that there's so much energy and power and, and love and support and unity in this movement that's been building for years that we've been really, I mean, I've been an organizer since I was literally like a ninth grader in high school, you know, and, and back then it was before climate was the cool thing to do. And now here we are right now on the Zoom call with you and your shirt says no more fossil fuel. Man. That's right. Like that is legendary. <laughs> And I think that's exactly the right ethos is, is that we're not here spoiled by dark interests. We're not here spoiled by some future that is dictated by the powers that be. We are here taking that power into our own hands yes. and determining what the future looks like for all of us. So thank you so much for all you've done in this movement to help push and organize and get out the vote. I, I feel like you're such an environmentalist and you're all into going green that I feel like that's the reason why the Hulk is green. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> that is. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Have it confirmed. Uh, the Hulk is green for climate. So <laughs> that's right. Thank you so much. And he's much. been green a long time because this yes, has been has. a long time coming. And here we are. Being green. Mm hmm. I love you guys. I'm so proud of you. I, I appreciate you. I, I, everything about you. I see all the different people and sex um, identifications and, and colors and all the things that make this life exciting and beautiful and amazing. And I'm so grateful for you. And I love you. And no matter what happens tomorrow, we keep marching together. We are not stoppable. Okay. We are, we are the future. You are the future. And the future is bright and promising. Yes. I love you. Love you too, Mark. <laughs> and everybody, I think he's exactly right. The reality is we march, we run, we vote, we win. And today, we text bank. So I'm so excited for you all to be here with us today to get out and text bank. I think we can literally text bank, text like 100,000 people on this call today. Right now on this Zoom, we have over 500 people that are ready to text people all across Georgia with this energy and love and desire to get out the vote. A lot is at stake in this election. We've heard it from some incredible people, from actors, from representatives, from singers, from activists. This is our time to really rise up and make a difference. And so with our coalition of partners 
from Future Coalition to 18 by Vote, plus one votes. I, I really wanna thank everyone who's come together to put this event together. And now we're going to close off our live stream programming and continue to text all these people across Georgia. So thank you guys who are at home for joining us. If you're in Georgia, you can vote tomorrow. Polls start opening at 9 a.m. And those times vary depending on your county. If you are online to vote when the polls close, as long as you stay in that line, you can vote. So do not leave that line, even if the polls close. If you're looking for your information on your polling location or any other information, you can go to plus one dots of votes to get that information. You also can get a free ride to the polls with the code GA vote in the Uber app. Those rides are paid for by plus one votes. And so we are happy to, if y'all need a ride to the polls, we got you fam. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, when you go to vote, who's your plus one?